Oh, hi! This week, we're gonna make Bert a Hagrid's hut because what else do I do with my free time? <laughs> for this project, I'm not entirely sure I have material that's gonna work well enough for this, but I wanna give it a shot because this seems more realistic for other people to get and I have a spare bag of it that I don't know what else to use it for. At least this first attempt is going to be using quilting batting. I found it in a bag at Goodwill. Holy shit, do not spend full dollars is the phrase I was about to say. That's not a thing people say. Don't pay full price for polyfill because it's always, always at the thrift store. So I regularly get the bags for like a buck or 50 cents where normally it's 10 to $15 for that shit. And 99% of the time it is completely unopened and unused because lots of people buy it and are like, one day I will make a stuffed bear for my child that I say that I like and then they never do it. Why do I keep creating this allegory of people hating their children? Well, I'm me, so that's probably why I'm doing it, but it's a weird, it's a weird road to take and I apologize. But there's lots of people that donate craft supplies that have have never been touched. Oh boy. Anyway, I have sewable foam that's stiffer and gives really good structure. I just don't think I have enough pieces for it. Also, that's not something a lot of people have available to them. The only reason I have it is because I was given a bunch of small scraps from the costume shop I worked at last year because they were going to get thrown in the trash anyway. And one thing that my boss there learned about me is that I'm basically a raccoon when it comes to thrown away material and I will scavenge anything and everything. <laughs> a, because I'm a cheap prick and B, because I hate seeing shit like that wasted. I'm like, there's something we can use this for. Such as one of the other materials I'm going to use to add some rigidity to this. I'm doing basically a lining. is very stiff canvas. It's actually a pant leg cut off because I currently work at a uniform store and I hem uh, so many pants. But there's so many cutoffs and I can't throw them all out. So I have a monstrous pile of them here and I need to use them for something other than just zipper bag linings because it's getting out of goddamn control. So here's what you need. It's spooky season y'all so pumpkin beer. Also not usually a pumpkin beer person but this shit is gold. Not sponsored by this brewery. They're just my favorite and I love them so much and this is legit top 10 beers of all time favorite for me so I'm excited that they have this my favorite beer my very very favorite beer is also from this brewery and it's habanero javelina it's a spicy IPA and hot damn no pun intended it's fucking delicious but we're being our basic bitch selves and having a pumpkin beer uh I almost never talk about the beer I'm drinking if I'm drinking beer which to be fair, has not been happening for most of this year, but it's something I get excited about. It's like a cool local seasonal whatever, so I'm probably gonna give like a little bit more detail, but don't freak out. This isn't gonna become like a beer podcast. I'm not gonna go too deep in it, mostly because I don't actually know that much about beer. I do enjoy it. I'm gonna leave it in because it brings me joy and I want to share that little glimmer of happiness with all of you because, you know, there's so little of it in the world these days. Cool, now that we're done having an existential crisis, let's get into to making a thing. So Hagrid's Hut, at least my old ass Lego version of Hagrid's Hut, it only has the one building where a lot of the later versions, because there was a second version of Hagrid's Hut and I like it less. They're Harry Potter Legos. They're gonna make me happy no matter what. But the one that I have and is most meaningful to me is the single building with like a little bucket of stuff next to it. <laughs> We're making a hexagon with no side rooms because I just don't have enough of this faux fur for that. It's really like a fleece, but it sheds like a faux fur, so it's the worst of both worlds. Anyways, the point is I have this like mossy gray fleece that I'm gonna use for the tops. I got some triangles cut out of this dark green color because the roof on my Hagrid's Hut Lego set is green. That is the basis for this entire project. Even though it's a different shade of green, that's the scrap I have. I also have batting pieces cut. So actually, how about we checklist style this? So I have fabric for the walls and the roof. There are six pieces of each. I have batting for the walls. This is walls. This is roof. Six of each. And then I have the thick canvas, six of the wall pieces, six of the roof pieces. It's a hexagon. You get it. Yes, if you aren't subscribed for some reason, which hey hi, we just passed 5,000 subscribers and I'm really fucking pumped about it. That's a bonkers amount of people. But if you would like to join the fold, go ahead and, and hit the button. So wherever it is in relation to where my giant head is currently. Yes, if you are unfamiliar, let me introduce you to the tiny little fuzzball that we are making this little hut for. This sleepy little sir is Bert, named after Bertie Bot, which was a suggestion by one of you, and I'm forever grateful because it just suits him perfectly. If you want to see how I made the bed he's laying in, I used an old sweater and an old pillow and some bear legs. 
I explain it all in the video. I'll link a little card up here so you can go check that out and figure out what the fuck I'm talking about. As for constructing this, I did cut the stiffer, thicker fabric to the size of the pattern piece, which is just a rectangle. I don't know if this is even gonna be a good enough size for what we're doing, but if you'd like measurements, this is nine and three quarters. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Unintentional, but I'm into it by seven and three quarters. Similarly, this is the seven and three quarters. And then I just went up like five inches or something. Did this like an hour ago and I don't remember how I went about it. Let's call it half the height of the rectangle. That seems close to right. I used to be a smart person and uh, took algebra two and geometry my freshman year and then never did math again except when I almost didn't pass my chemistry class because that's very math intense and I hated every second of it. Thankfully, there was a Canadian transfer student and he was very good with numbers but hated getting his hands dirty. So I would do all the technical grimy parts of chemistry class and then he would do all the shitty stoichiometry shit that I had no interest in and could still not at all tell you how to do. Oh boy, this is derailing quickly. Let's construct some things. So I mentioned that these are cut to the right size because I cut the batting a little oversized because it's bigger and thicker. You don't want every piece to be cut out exact because then lining everything up is going to be the fucking worst. And also these, they're pretty close to this size, but probably a little bit bigger. So we're gonna be making some sandwiches. And I think I'm gonna sew these two layers together first and then sew this one on. And yes, one of these is gonna need a little doorway entrance. We will tackle that in a minute. The roof piece is the same way. Do the outer fabric and the batting. Just do a basting stitch, by the way. Do like the longest stitch your machine will do. Don't worry about back tacking. And then we'll fuck with the properly sized lining pieces afterwards. Okay, our stretchy layer is basted to our batting layer. The next thing I'm gonna do is pin all of my stiff layers. Yes, I should iron these, but also it's a dog bed. Here's my tactic. All of this is wrong sides together. So it's a little sandwich, right sides are facing out on both sides because I'm gonna surge all the edges because they're all gonna be on the inside. If you want to and you don't have a serger and you wanna go through the extra steps that I don't wanna do, you can sew your pieces right sides together, leave a gap somewhere, go around the rest of the edges and then flip it all out. Like I said, wrong sides together for me, making little sandwiches and I'm just gonna search the edges and hope for the best. I feel like there was something else I was gonna tell you about but it's not coming to me. Oh, right, we gotta make the door piece. Okay, okay, so this is the one piece I'm gonna do right sides together. The long way going up, and I'm gonna have a big rounded shape. Draw if you want, I'm just gonna kind of free hand stitch, free stitch hand. Let's do that, and then I'll show you where we go from there. Okay, so this is what I meant by the round door shape. Cut like a quarter of an inch away from the stitches from the inside of the door shape. Also, I did smaller stitches because this is gonna be like a finished edge. Then I'm also gonna make little notches on the curved parts, not through the stitches, but pretty close to the stitches and about quarter of an inch apart from each other. So it looks like this on the curvy bits, cool, cool. And now I'm gonna take that lining fabric and fold it around the back. So now it's gonna look like this with a nice finished edge for the open bit. I'm gonna sew everything over to the batting and gray fabric side. So I'm gonna be stitching along here. Let me do it and then show you so we make sure that it's making sense maybe. Okay, so I did that under stitching. I think that's what that's called. And then I also top stitched so that this lining wants to tuck back here. Now I'm going to line up the corners and then I'm just gonna stitch the edges into the sandwiches with the right sides facing out just like everything else. But now there's a gap in the middle of this one. That's, that's it. Okay, so remember when my whole plan was to surge all the edges? Well, I don't know why it isn't working for me, but normally taking everything apart and re-threading, kind of starting from zero, does the trick and I am like so beyond having the patience to fuck with it any further. We're just gonna use pinking shears to trim all these edges. Everything's stitched down. It's gonna be quicker this way anyway. The dog's not gonna care. No point in stressing at the current moment about it. Okay, this is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I think for assembly, I'm just going to start with the roof pieces first and I'll be attaching short sides Sides, right sides together. And then yeah, attach all six together. I mean, while we're here, wall pieces also, right sides together. Make sure 
you're matching up long sides so that the short ends aren't getting sewn to anything yet. And for the door piece, just treat it like it's a full panel. Easy peasy, it's gonna be great. E okay, I'm back to being excited about this. Man, I'm so mad at my serger. That's another day's problem. But yes, here are the walls and our little door, and here is our roof. So I'm basically lining up one roof panel to one wall panel, keeping seams lined up. My roof is attached with pins to the sides, so I'm just gonna stitch around all of these. This is teeny tiny, but I still think he's gonna wanna curl up in it, so I'm not, I'm not giving up yet. <sighs> okay, I wanna see what this looks like. I mean, not the worst thing so far, right? But we have, we have to put a bottom on this. This looks insane right now. Okay, it's been a couple days. This is what we're working with. Kind of already want to remake a new one, but I don't have the time right now. And I do want to see how the bottom's gonna work out. There's still some testing. This has been a good mock-up, I guess, for future endeavors. Plus it, it's using up a ton of scrap fabric, except this new material I got. These are foam cushion inserts. I really want like a big squashy base to this. It's also gonna help give a little more structure to this. I really needed to make these triangles taller and also sew the end points so they weren't overlapping at all. If you watch the video where I made the scrap dog ball, like the beach ball toy I made for Bert, the way I do corners on there, that's how I should have done the corners here. I did some of them that way, but then I just got lazy. And I don't know how much that would have helped, but in future, when I do the next version that will have peakier peaks, kinda, you kinda have to do the corners that way. But hey, this is all a learning process. This is the point of the whole goddamn channel. So thank you for hanging out and sticking with me. Anyways, this is inch thick foam. This machine, I don't know if it's gonna go through, maybe with a walking foot. Instead of actually sewing through any of this, I'm just gonna make a pocket and that's also gonna hide these seams. Gonna finish off more of this material. We've already torn it up this much. And I'm making a hexagon panel out of this using the pattern piece I used for the top. I'm actually gonna trace this onto paper first to super make sure I don't fuck this up and then I will cut it out of the foam. Oh boy, that was a bigger struggle than it needed to be. Eventually, I measured across this wide, just any any of these across and it was about 12 inches. So then I made a 12 inch circle and then I folded this into sixths and then cut the edges straight. And now we have a hexagon. I feel like I've talked about this recently, possibly earlier in this video, but <laughs> I used to be so smart and I don't know what happened. Probably just not using any of the knowledge I had absorbed. It just kind of leaked out my ears, but I used to be like in all the advanced math shit. I do remember yelling about stoichiometry earlier. It's been a few days, but I'm still disappointed in myself for not retaining that information better. Anyways, we have the pattern piece now. Let's make sure this fits. I just gotta cut this a little bit bigger because some of the seam allowance takes away from the length, like the seam allowance from where all the top pieces were attached. So I'll just cut all the fabric and the foam to be a little bit bigger than this and it should be fine. Oh no, actually, you know what? The foam should be this size. The fabric should be bigger than this because when I attach the fabric, it's gonna become smaller with the seam allowance and then the foam will need to be that smaller size to fit into it. Although it's all gonna stretch, so I don't need to worry too, too much about this. So when I say pocket, I'm gonna attach two layers of this to the bottom of here and I gotta find an opening somewhere. Initially I thought, oh, I'll just put like a gap in one of the seams and we can stuff it in and I'll stitch it later, but might as well make that part removable and washable. So I think I'm going to have the top layer, it's gonna sit here, be a whole piece and then have the bottom be like, these two halves extend the middle over a little bit so that it'll overlap. Either leave it like that, like a pillowcase that folds over in the back if it's a decorative pillow type of thing, or if it's gaping, I can add some cam snaps on the bottom. It's doing things like this where I'm very much aware of how I am a hands-on learner. I really can only think things through so far. It's a hurdle. It's something that is kind of detrimental to my work sometimes and has been an issue in the past, but I, I, just can't compute certain things until I physically am doing the thing, you know? It's frustrating because I wish I could just walk myself through things in a more theoretical sense. This is very judgmental and I don't feel this way about other people, but I'm always harsher on myself as everybody is to themselves, but I do feel dumb when I can't visualize the thing and work through it. It's like how my brain works things out. I, I don't know how to get around 
that for me for sewing stuff at least it seems to just be a matter of working through the projects so that I learn for next time so next time I'm tackling something like this I'll be like oh I can handle it how I handled this other thing let's not do it the way I'm initially thinking I should because this is the problem I ran into last time I kind of need to work through things like that I suppose I should be taking more notes I guess these are documents of those things. I will go back and rewatch videos. Okay, I know I've made this before. I feel like there was a hiccup or two. Let's rewatch how I handled it and then I will remember what happened going forward because I've made a lot of shit. I've been here for like five plus years. Specifically doing these videos, I was doing other shit before that, but doing DIY videos for over five years and I straight up forget some of the things I've made until I see a comment on an older video. I'm like, oh fuck, I completely forgot we did that. <laughs> There's, it's a lot, there's a lot of things to make and I can't retain everything as shown by all the math falling out of my ears. Okay, this is not helping us get this done any faster. So I'm gonna cut out my hexagon fabric pieces because there's an opening here for his little door. I need to like sew it right sides together, flip it out so there's a finished edge for this bit. Okay, so yes, one edge, I'm gonna take, I guess the center panel, that seems easiest. And by center panel, I mean the opposite side from the center opening flap of the bottom piece. Yeah, I'm gonna do that and just pick an edge of the full piece to attach it to. And I'm gonna stitch that right sides together right now. Now it looks like this. So I'm gonna fold this over so now it's wrong sides together. So yes, if, if this isn't making sense so far, here's the seam we just did on the wrong sides. We're gonna fold this down and I'm gonna pin these two edges together. And there should be a little extra kind of coming over the center here. Same thing on this side. Then we're gonna take our second half piece, lay this wrong sides together and line it up so that this middle flap is on top of the first piece's middle flap, if that's making sense. So it's gonna be overlapping over here. I'm not gonna worry about hemming this. If you want to have a finished edge, hem this edge over first. So you should have one finished edge over here. You can certainly top stitch over that if you feel like it. And then a little bit that can open like this. We'll be able to get our foam piece in. I'm gonna baste this together just cause it's very floppy material. Okay, we've got our little wonky pocket. I'm very excited about this. So what we're gonna do is flip this guy so it's inside out. Make sure the finished edge is lined up with the edges of the door. So I'll go in right sides together and then just start matching up seams to corners. Stitch all this together. I am gonna do a zigzag just to give it that little bit of stretch and then we cut the foam. I can't wait to cut the foam. Okay. This is what this looks like now. Let's flip it out. I think I managed to not ruin everything. Yay! Y'all, it's uh, it's not the worst thing I've ever spent my time making. I'm just gonna do another little size check with this. I think I can cut the foam a teensy bit bigger than the pattern. And that's gonna be the last step is stuffing it in there. So I'm gonna trace this bad boy onto here. Here we go. I think I'm gonna grab a healing mat and use a box cutter because you do not use your fabric shears on foam. Okay, not the most perfect or like cleanest edges, but we're stuffing it into a dog bed. It's gonna be fine. So now we're gonna put it in our little pocket down here. So there's still a little gapping on the bottom. If that's something that bothers you, you can put cam snaps over this. And obviously I would hem the edges on a nicer version, but for what we're doing, I, I'm gonna call this done. I'm really happy about this. I know it's not the most polished thing in the world. That's not Hagrid's MO anyway. Do you wanna come here and try your bed? Come on, what's in there? Is this too small for you? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, it doesn't seem uncomfortable, but it's definitely <laughs> I can't fucking handle this dog. He, he's so chill. Look, look at him. You're so tolerant of my bullshit. Thank you all so much for hanging out and being part of the gang. Super special shout out to all my bog trolls. Super extra huge thanks to everyone over on my Patreon because they are the ones that are making this kind of stuff happen and letting me do dumb activities such as torturing my poor rescue pup. I hope you're all having a lovely week and I will see you all back here with another video on Saturday. Thanks for hanging out. I mean, it's not the best thing I've spent my time making, but you know, Let's meet somewhere in the middle.